If Christianity were true, would you be a Christian? That is the number one question that needs to be asked when you're dealing with a skeptic. And I think the answer would surprise a lot of you. Because believe it or not, we're not dealing with an intellectual issue, we're dealing with a heart issue. Let me tell you a quick story. When I became a Christian, it was a very experiential moment. It was a moment when the Holy Spirit came into my life and changed me on the inside and made me a new creation. And I could not deny this experience because the experience was radical and I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God was real and that Jesus died for my sins. But anybody who knows me will tell you that I am a skeptic at the very core of my being. I don't trust people. I don't trust things that are told to me. I don't believe things unless I see it. That is who I am. So because of this personality trait, I was drawn to apologetics. I loved apologetics. I loved the evidence and the defense of the Bible, of the historical Jesus and all that. In my mind, I knew if I could convince somebody that this were true and that their doubts didn't need to be doubts, they would become a Christian, that they would give their life to Christ. But what I found out is, is that evidence and proof doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that people do not believe in God because they do not want to believe in God. They do not want a God. They do not want authority. They want to be God themselves. They want to live their life however they want, without any parameters, without any direction and authority over them. You could go through and systematically prove to them that Jesus was a historical person who died on the cross under Pontius Pilate, was resurrected to 500 witnesses, and it, they wouldn't care. None of that matters because it's not about the truth. It's about themselves. Romans 1 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who suppress the truth and unrighteousness, because what may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness in the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator. You see, the problem is not an intellectual problem. It is a heart problem. People are without excuse because the things of God and the creation of God bear witness to who God is and that there is a God. But because the lust of our flesh, we would rather run after the things that satisfy our flesh and satisfy our needs and our wants instead of serving our creator. So like I said, if Christianity were true, would you be a Christian? Because the evidence is all there. The evidence is overwhelming. There's more evidence for Christianity in the historical Jesus, his death, burial, and resurrection than there is anything in history. But you ignore it, but we ignore it, but people ignore it because it's not about what's true. So if you're here today and you're not a Christian or you're a Muslim or you're a Hindu or an atheist, whatever, whoever you are, whatever you are, if Christianity were true, would you be a Christian? I want you to answer that in the comments. And if the, whether the answer is yes or no, I want you also to say, what is your biggest reason for doubt? What is your biggest reason for skepticism? Put yourself aside and focus on what is true. What are the facts? What is reality? Not what you want it to be, but what is. So God bless everybody. Have a great day.